Welcome to today's exciting launch party called Continue Your Artistic Journey with a New Die. Today we're launching the newest Die to Try series die. Hi quilters, I'm Lynn Gibney, AccuQuilt's Chief Brand and Product Officer. I can't wait for you to see this month's Die to Try. So let me quickly introduce you to your host, Pam and Erica. Yay. Oh, thank All you. All right, thanks, Miss Lynn. All right, quilters, this new is new die is designed to unlock a world of creative possibilities in quilting. And we have had such a great time working with it. We really have. So we have got a great launch party planned for you all today. As always, we've got a lot of fun. We've got some brilliant prizes, easy peasy project ideas, and a stunning trunk show. All right, ladies, I'm going to go get ready for our experts. We've got Barbara Harper and Anita Amador, who will be helping to show off the new die in a little bit. Plus, we have a special guest joining us today Wonderful. as well. So I want to make sure that she's all ready to go. Have a great show. All right, we'll all see right. you. Thanks, Lynn. I'm excited about I our guest. Know. So let's take a look at this new die. Any project can be portable with the Go English Paper Piecing Jewel Petal 1 inch finished sides die. With traditional English paper piecing, it can be difficult to perfectly hand cut each shape. But with this die, you will effortlessly cut all eight shapes for both the fabric and paper pieces using any Go fabric cutter. Use these jewel petal shapes to make delicate flowers, bold stars, and precious hearts. You'll love the fun free patterns you can make with this die. Pair it up with the Go Cube English paper piecing one inch finish sides and other Go dies to create modern wall hangings, colorful mug rugs, detailed table runners, and more. English paper piecing is perfect for on the go projects because at AccuQuilt we help you cut time so you can quilt more. All right, are you so excited? I am, I am. I, I just love that we're expanding our creative possibilities with paper piecing. Yes. All right, quilters, Eric and I, were both fans of English paper piecing and we're super excited about this die that is coming out and let's hold it up and let you see. That's right. I mean, we both love having a quilting project that we can take along with us. That's perfect wherever we go. And we're gonna be talking about that more later in the show, but Right now, we want to talk about what makes this die so special. Like that it's on a six by 12 die board and it's gonna fit any one of our Go cutters, including the ultra portable Go Me. Yep. All right, so not only quilters, is it gonna cut your fabric, right? but it's gonna cut the templates for it as well. And when you look at this die, you're gonna say, what, how is this? <laughs> we're gonna cut, cut it and show We're gonna cut you. some, cause look, there's some blades here. Right. They're gonna create kind of this jewel shape. So we're gonna lay that jewel shape there and yep. let you take a look at it. And then we've got some of the fabric yep. here. Yep. There's a piece of fabric so you can see what yep. it looks like. And like all of our geometric shapes, it well, has that, that doesn't quarter. Probably show up. Yeah, there we go. Quarter inch seam allowance built in. Remember, you can always cut six layers of cotton fabric. So six layers on this side. But Erica, I only cut two papers at a time. Yeah, if I'm cutting paper, cardstock, uh, card stock, nice heavy cardstock, I'll do two layers. As because well. these are reusable if you use cardstock, but we have a trick coming up. Oh, yes, we do. Now, these are going to have one inch finish size sides. So it's going to work perfectly with our English paper piecing cube, right. which also has one inch finished sides. Right. And we have this die here. I'll show you. This is our standalone hexagon die that right. has one, oh, here we'll do it this so you can see. Do that way. One inch finished sides on the paper, on the fabric. I'm and then here, here's hexagon. the fabric. Yep. And here's the little hexagons. Yes. Or, now. Yes, they're all. And we've got even more shapes inside the cube to flex and to work with. So we want to talk a little bit about those dies, right? right? Yes, we do. Okay, we do. but maybe we should cut some. 
petals let's, first. Let's cut some petals so first. We cut some petals yeah, first. I feel like you're then itching we'll jump to jump in. in. I know, I am. Okay. So let's do that. Okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to find that lengthwise grain nice and tight. Mm hmm Want to make sure you you can follow the instructions to subcut. Yep. Now, Erica, when I do um, cardstock, I typically don't cut it down because then I find that I waste right some cardstock. Uh, but you certainly could cut it down. So yeah. I just covered those two shapes. You're going to need a six by twelve cutting mat. Now, if you're using this in your go me. You're going to want to measure that. Right. And you and could probably fold your your cardstock in half then. The long way. Look at this. Look at us doing stuff. On the fly. On the fly. Here, there's two. There we go. Okay, look at that. Or you could just fold it in half like that. Okay, here we go. So I'm going right. to give it to Erica. Again, we're going to use our Go Big today, but you could totally use your Go. Right, you could. And your Go Me. So I'm going to come over here. And it's already turned on for me. Perfect. This is so fun. You can get so many of these cut out in just seconds and be oh, ready right. to run out the door with them. And I have a tendency to make mine scrappy. Yes. Which you do as well, I, I think. I do because is this not the best way to use up scraps ever? Yeah. yeah. All right, so should we open up the cube Talk about English paper piecing, and then we'll show you how we can talk about how you can put these together. Shall we do that? We can do that. Okay. You have okay. a cube right there. All right. So the cube's right here. Let's grab it. And just like our other cubes, we're going to pull up. It's going to show you the shapes that we've got inside, and we're going to pull this off. Ta-da! Ta-da! And open them up. So... Now, when you think of English paper piecing, since we're starting with the history and we're gonna talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about it, when I think when most people talk about English paper piecing or EPP, right. they're gonna, it's a hand sewing technique. You're it is. You're gonna baste fabric around a template and hand stitch those pieces together and the, si the, the shape we think of is this hexagon. Right here, yep. Okay. And now this hexagon in different um, English paper piecing come in different sizes. Right. Ours is a standard one inch. I feel like yes. one inch is how it goes. So in this cube, not only do you get the die that cuts fabric, but you get the die that cuts the template. And Erica, I think you have a sample. Yes, because I do this have This is brilliant. Some. Because this is so fun. If you were cutting these in cardstock and you wanna just take them out. Right. What you have then is a template that cuts a hole in the center. Okay, so look. And why do we have that hole, Erica? So that when you're done and you've got all your sides sewn into your project, which is the next step after basting mm -hmm. your fabric around it, you can pop that little card out and reuse it. Yes, reusable totally. So in the cube, there are hexagons and their templates. Right. Half hexagons. There are half hexagons, that are, that's they're right. They look like this. And their templates. And I love half hexagons because you can create like triangles with them. Oh, you can and create you, so many things. So with many them. fun things with them. Okay. All right. And again, the template that goes with it. All right. Here Trade we go. You. Yep. Okay, so our next set of shapes, we're going to have the equilateral triangle and a diamond, and these are small. So here's our diamond, here's some of the diamonds put together. Yep. And here is some, I have Ladies. some with equal, oh, here we go. There we go. So here we have, here you can see the diamond, the equilateral triangle, yep. and the half hexagon put together to create this fun design. Right, and look at how many you get. You get two, four, six of the diamonds on one die and eight of those equilateral triangles. You're gonna do so much cutting. Yep. Now, English paper piecing dates back to the late 1700s in England, and it was one of the most popular styles of quilting by the early 1800s. But even though it's been around a long time, it's very popular today with both modern and traditional quilters. Now, we're gonna dig into the quilty details later, 
Um, but should we talk about how we are going to put our paces on or should we wait till after our special Let's guest? Let's wait till after our special okay. guest because I really want to hear from her. We are thrilled to be joined today by the one and only Belle Bruner. Now, that we have looked at that English paper piecing, jewel petal die, we can't wait to hear more about EPP in general from Belle and working with this shape. Now, Belle began quilting in her mid 40s and quickly fell in love with the craft. After taking an extensive pattern writing con course, we need to take which that. I would love to take also, she began designing and publishing quilt patterns. She focused on confident beginner patterns and techniques that even advanced quilters love to make and believes that all people of any age can learn how to quilt. Bella is a brand ambassador for Havel Sewing, The Daylight Company, and Olisio for all of you who have Olisio irons. That's right. She is a former 2022 Maywood Studio maker and is currently a 2023 instructor for the American Quilter Society Quilt Week, the Original Sewing and Quilting Expo, and International Quilt Festival. She believes that strong, inclusive guilds, quilt guilds, contribute to strong communities, and I would agree 100%. I would also. Belle was on our August 22nd show talking about English paper piecing basics, but she's got even more to share with all of you today. Thank you for joining us, Miss Belle. There she is. Hello. Hi, Belle. Hi, and, Pam and Erica. And Belle, you are traveling currently, so thank you for <laughs> taking a few minutes while you're traveling to join us. Oh, I'm happy to. I'm just grateful for the local quilt shop that let me set everything up here really quickly to be with you today. Well, good. Well, first of all, I learned so much from our August 22nd show. If you haven't watched it, quilters, go back. It go lives back on our Facebook that. page or YouTube channel. But Belle, with the release of the Go English Paper Piecing Jewel Petal Die, how have you started incorporating those shapes into your projects? Well, I brought one behind Look at this. Me. I was going to say, yeah. I can see it right behind you. Yeah. Look at it. So, um, this was all made with the jewel petal die and, of course, the hexi die. Right. So, this is a new free pattern for everyone, and it's called the Petal Starburst Quilt. Isn't it beautiful? So, it's got it 18 beautiful. of these, and they're appliqued um, to, to squares, and then all those are sewn together to create the quilt. And I did it all with scraps. I love everything I about love it. it. And you match. Yes, you match you perfectly. match your quilt so well. Yeah, I do. I've also made a few other things too. So it's really versatile. So I made a matching pillow. You oh, look at how cute, cute that is. Look at the fussy the cutting. Fuss, I know. It's so fun to fussy cut with this, with this die. Okay. And then also uh, used an embroidery hoop. So look I made this star. Is that sweet? That hangs in my studio. I like that a lot. I do too. And, and I even use it with the Go Cube that you talked about. So these are some of the shapes. Oh, from, yeah. How pretty yeah. that is. Yes, that That's is funny. so pretty. pretty. That is. Everything's... And then I applied one to put on my EPP bag. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Perfect. That's there you perfect. go. Perfect. Okay, you go. I have to ask, what's your favorite part about using the Go system along with English paper piecing? Oh, it's by hands down, it's so much quicker. Right. Like to cut it, you don't have to use an acrylic and the rotary cutter, it's just 24 of them just like that. And my papers as well. Right, yeah. Right. Oh, and before we go on, um, Belle, where can we find that free pattern that's behind you? Yes, so if you go to my website and okay. go to the blog section, I've written a whole blog artic article about the die and also about the um, the Petal Starburst, and people can get that for free. You just need to fill in the little box and it'll come right to your email. I follow oh. Belle on Instagram, she's I super know, fun. I know, I know. All right, so last time you were here, um, you mentioned you'd been doing EPP for about a year and a half because you wanted to work on a project on the go and how you keep each of your group of shapes together with bindy clips. Um, how do you keep all of your other English paper uh, uh, piecing supplies together while you travel? Well, it depends. So if, if there's room on the airplane or in the car, which there is in the car, I use the Yazzie bag. Okay. Um, okay. And it's got all of these compartments in here. So you can see my little clip. Holy smokes. Yeah. So here's <laughs> the, you know, all the papers, the leave With the binding table, clips. That I use. Yeah. Yes. Then we've got ones that have already been glue basted. Yes. Ones that need to be glue basted. Oh my goodness. Hexies in there. 
And then I use this section for like, this is one I'm working on over here. So these are all the pieces that go, you know, with that. Oh, one. oh, okay. So they're okay. like the pattern pieces. Yes. Okay. Right. So those all are cut out and everything. And then, you know, the section for my glue stick and yeah. um, thread catcher and all that good stuff. So I just applique, of course, the jewel petal on my Yabby bag, okay. too. I so need one of those That bags. is a magical bag, Miss Bell. Yeah. And then your finished ones you can put inside here. So if you unzip yes. this, you can put your finished ones. Now, and that's one option. The other one is, if I don't have a lot of room, like for my backpack, if I'm flying, I take um, this little bag. It's, it's a beginner EPP kit I have. And so I just throw in what I need, just the bare minimum for a quick mm -hmm. trip. And I'll travel with this and just throw it in my backpack. And what's in that kit? Because we, yes. we were going to talk because about it. It's, it's on your, on your oh, website. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I had so many people when I started learning how to do this that were like, I want to learn. So I was like, well, maybe I'll make something so people can. So it's got the pouch. You've got your pouch to hold everything. There's a needle minder, a needle book. There's also a sticky thimble dot. Um, there is a needle. You've got your glue pen, your Solang glue pen plus a refill. Mm -hmm. I've also put in your hexi papers and your jewel petals papers, which I've cut for you with the AccuQuilt guys. Oh my goodness. And the papers, the papers are in there. You've got a clover clip to hold everything together, thread and your snips. So it's, it's, there's no excuse not it's to give it a try. Bag, that right little there. bag, yes. You need to get us one of those. I know, that's super sweet. Okay, yeah. now you have some other English paper piecing helpers on your website. Can you share what they are? Sure, I do. So for those that don't want to cut their papers, I also have iron-on. So these are iron-ons. I have them in hexi in the jewel petal shape, and you just iron them to the wrong side of your, your jewel petal, your hexi. And so you don't have to actually cut your own papers. They just are glued right in, and then you just glue base, you know, around them. Oh, so that's okay. Brilliant. Here. That's brilliant. Okay. Yeah. I've also got, um, it's a seam so me ring thread cutter. So if you don't want to carry snips, you just put this on your ring finger and you can cut your thread as you go. That's That's super on there. cute. That's adorable. Okay. And then I, what else? And then I've got thread. Yes. Okay. We talked about thread the last time you were here. We did. We talked about how you were using stabilizer instead of leave-in papers. And we talked about thread like 60 weight cotton or 80 weight cotton poly blend. And, and that changed our lives as English yes. paper pieces. Yes, because it did. Because forever now, I was like, I can just use stabilizer. Yes. I, and leave it in. And leave it in. Okay. But you also Stable. use other projects like our products like Sew Tight Dots, which right, we do. have on our website. Yes. Right? Yes. Look, We're going to match her. They it do. all matches. Oh, oh my gosh. I, I like almost that. ruined the whole thing. I almost unthreaded my needle. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. All right. And then Set how aside. do you use them in English paper piecing, those little magnets? Well, so ultimately you're going to, you're going to use them to hold your two pieces together. Okay. So, you know, you, you, you've got your two say jewel petals, your right. two hexes, pretty sides together. And this, this will hold it. So you actually don't, um, what I say in the South, they don't get whomper jawed and kind of out of order. <laughs> Forever I'm going to say that word. <laughs> whomper jawed. Okay. Yeah. So it, it keeps them lined up for your stitches to stay even. There you go. And I love that, that she I says that. put the pretty sides together. Pretty sides together, yes. All right, all right, Bella, if our viewers want to see your quilting adventures, which you all should follow, Belle, yes. um, how do they do so? Uh, well, you can find me on Instagram. So it's at seams underscore so underscore me. You can find me there. Also have a YouTube channel. So it's Belle at Seams So Me. And then also my website, which is www.seamsome.com. And I'd love for you to follow along. I'm just oh. so excited. Well, she just has great things. Thank you so much for coming back on the show and talking about this shape. We love it. We love that you love it too. Yep. I do. And I can't wait to see everybody's quilts they make I'm with this free pattern. Yes. Oh, it's, it's so pretty. Fun. I feel like the colorways are going to be super cool to see, right, yes. when people share it. See, right. I'm seeing it in blues like snowflakes. Yeah, yeah. It's already in our quilting already head. Already in our heads. Be fun. Hey, Be Be Belle, thanks for joining us, and thanks for the quilt shop that lets you uh, sneak well, a few yeah, minutes. I know. Yes. Thanks for having me. It was good to be with you again. Thanks. Bye-bye. 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 Oh, okay. she is so fun. 
every time I talk to her, I learn stuff. I know. And she has only been doing English paper piecing for like a year and a half. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. The things we learn. Mm -hmm. All right, so after hearing more about English paper piecing from Belle, we want to know, quilters, oh, what yeah. level of English paper piecing expert are you? Are you a beginner, a novice, or a full-blown expert? If you're watching on our website or on YouTube, you can click on the vote box below or to the right of the chat box. And if you're watching via Facebook, vote from the box that displays over our video. Okay, I used to think I was an expert. Yes. And then I met Belle. And so now I think I'm firmly in novice land. I feel like I'm an advanced novice. Advanced novice. We'll, here, we'll give ourselves advanced novice. It is pouring down rain yes, outside. Yes, if, if you, you hear could. funny things, it's the rain outside. Which we need. Yes. All right, quilters, for today's show, we've challenged two of our experts to come up with plenty of ideas using the Go English Paper Piecing Jewel Petal Die. That's right. Now, our first expert is going to be Barbara Harper. Barbara is a quilter, seamstress, pattern designer, educator, long arm newbie, and scrap fabric lover. She is. Barbara's owned her AccuQuilt Go since 2008 and she credits much of her award-winning quilt success to the accurate cuts that her Go system provides. She began sewing as a child with her grandmother, learning additional skills in 4-H high school home ec and honing her skills by making every mistake possible, which is one of the things I love about Barbara. <laughs> she talks about that. A strategy that guides her when she's teaching students sewing techniques. Yep. As a seamstress, Barbara incorporates the AccuQuilt system into a wide variety of sewing-related work. She teaches at guilds, shops, retreats, as well as creates patterns and projects for us here at AccuQuilt and the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Now, our other expert today is Anita Amador. Anita! Hello, Anita. She is a professional quilter, educator, designer, AccuQuilt expert, and aspiring writer. A self-proclaimed cubaholic, Anita enjoys using the Go AccuQuilt system, block on board dies, and upsizing and downsizing designs with her cubes in her designs. Now she designs up to eight quilts a year and makes between 10 and 12 a year. She's taught at local quilt shops across the country. Anita feels most at home in a room full of quilters, sharing her knowledge of the AccuQuilt fabric cutting system and the tips and techniques that can bring a modern way of cutting into the world of quilting. Anita is a retired Navy chief, and she lives in Southern Kentucky with her husband, who is a retired Air Force uh, Master Sergeant, and their two Siamese cats. That's right. All right, I can't wait to see the inspiration that our experts have. Barbara, what have you got so far? Hi ladies, I'm so excited I need to, make sure to be my here are... for the launch of the new English paper piecing jewel pedal. I'm going to admit, I'm not a hand sewer. I don't like it. Uh, but, and that's why they invented sewing machines, but I found lots of ways to use my sewing machine to make great designs with this new die. And it is something that everybody's going to want. First, I started out simply by taking my equilateral triangle die and using shapes from there to create hexagons simply by sewing the smaller equilateral triangle to the edge and fussy cut in the center I made some great different designs Halloween for you Pam I worked with uh, just some leftover strips I laid them on my die fussy cut them on my die to make shapes that look like this or laying it across the die sideways you get some looks that look like this and again, I used those little equilateral triangles, sewed them on the side to come up with that. I did a lot of applique. Um, what about a butterfly? I used the bigger designs and the smaller designs and some little diamonds um, to put on there, just ready to be applique on. I cut some uh, vinyl and I used a super glue pen to adhere them to this little makeup bag. I did, I think this is a really neat design. And then on the back, I did a heart and they're not going anywhere. Again, using my equilateral triangle and turn it into diamonds, I could make designs like this. But look, it's a gigantic hexagon. So what a neat design is gonna be if I just add or connect those together. Um, stripe fabric, oh my gosh. I played with some stripe fabric. I made these little, um, units simply by sewing them together on my machine and then turning the edges 
And with the striped fabric being laid on the board different ways, now I can just go in there and hand sew them together. Again, using my equilateral triangle die, I was able to do some designs that look like this with that strap, striped fabric. Again, I've got some hexagons that'll be easy to go together. This quilt on the wall, I used that same design and this is all hand sewn and hand quilted. And I wanted to duplicate it because I just love this old quilt. In this case, I used my two and a half inch strip die, cut 60 degree diamonds, and then did some Y seams to put them in there. And so I'll be able to reproduce this quilt. So lots of ideas of things that you can use applique, you can use blanket stitch to put your units together. You can simply sew them together and turn the edges. Um, so I'm excited and I find lots of opportunity. I'll be back with a project for you. Okay, oh first, gosh. did you see the Halloween ones in the background? Yes, I did. And she showed them up close and personal yes. too. You were checking your car windows. Yes, <laughs> they're just amazing. Okay, so first of all, think about this because she did stripes. Yes. And I feel like sometimes we're a little nervous about stripes. But she does fabulous things with mm -hmm. stripes. I feel like we shouldn't be afraid of them. No, and how you lay it on the, on the die is just yes. perfect. And then you just line up the edges with the yes. edges. And I just think that that's brilliant. Well, and I also think that it's interesting how she said she's not a big hand sewer. Right, but right. She found wonderful ways of mm -hmm. working with these shapes and doing some really creative things, yeah. didn't she? Yeah. And I love that she's going to recreate that quilt in the background because that, that is, is super a cool. Super cool quilt. Sixty degree diamonds. You can yep. cut them on your strip die. Yep. All right. I can't see. I can't wait to see what else our experts come up with. But first, let's give away a Go English Paper Piecing Jewel Petal Die to a lucky viewer who registered for today's show. All right, quilters, our first lucky winner of a Go English Paper Piecing Jewel Petal One Inch Finish Die is, drum roll please. It's Joyce K from Elko, Nevada. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're gonna love this, Joyce. Boy, I hope you like maybe your new English Paper Piecing because yes. this is a great way to start. Oh, it is. This is All perfect. Right. So as we promised, I think it's about time we roll up our sleeves and show everyone some of the easy master yes. skills needed for English paper piecing starting with basting. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna move our little shapes out yeah. here and Erica has her little pieces. So so this is if you're using cardstock. Right. Okay. So you're gonna take these pieces and notice it has that great quarter inch seam around it, uh, mm -hmm. allowance built around it. Right. All right, so there are three ways to baste. You can whip stitch around the template. Which is what we did here. Right, the stitches will stay in the project. So you'll be working only from behind and not catching the template or the cardstock in your stitches. Right. So right there. And this is typically how I used to do it. Back in the day. Back in the day. Now, before another, we got smarter. Another way to do it is to base from the front. A lot of English paper piecing fans will do this. Yes. They will leave their knot or a tail on the top mm -hmm. and they will base through the car both layers of fabric and okay. the cardstock. Right. all the way around. Then once the pieces are sewn together, they will pull out those stitches. And leaving the knot and the t a big knot and a tail on top is gonna help you with that. Right. Now, we used to do that, both of us. Yes. And now we decided to work smarter, not harder. We did. So our new favorite technique is glue basting with a fabric glue stick. Yes. In my experience, not any old glue stick works as the same as a fabric uh, glue stick. Yes. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. I'll let so you look glue. How we do. Yeah. Because this is the This, this is, the, is the best way. Because when I first started, I thought, okay, this is cool. And I think I went and got one of my kids' glue sticks. Yeah. And a regular school glue type stick, I was so disappointed with the results that yeah. I went to hand basting. And so this is why... I hand basted all of mine around here and, and I've got a whole lot of them for my project that I started a while back right. that are done that way because that's how I used to do it. Well, and then we discovered uh, fabric. fabric glue. And, and I'm gonna tell you, 
it really makes a huge difference. And also, this is a project that if my granddaughter, who is nine, is hanging out with me, yes. she can glue base. Oh, absolutely she can glue okay, base. So I'm going to give a little glue there. And it has purple. It, dr it dries clear, but it has purple, so you can see yes. it. Yes. Now, this Look at that. is the June Taylor. Look how good that is. This is the June Taylor fabric glue stick. They're on our site. They work really well. Throw a couple in your cart, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, it's important, like Barbara said, she's not much of a hand sewer, but she loved working with this. She worked with the vinyl, she worked with glue, yes. she did some really different things. Now, there's something else to think about. We added that quarter inch seam allowance to all of our fabric shapes. So that means you could machine a piece them if you wanted to, which is totally doable. Yes. So check out this great book. It's called English Paper Piecing Made Easy by Katja Merrick. It's on our website and it has great instructions. And Eric, do you want to open it up and it'll, we can lay it here so probably, here, it's I'll probably it easier. Here. So it has got 36 different uh, block ideas. You Using notice block. that they all make hexagon shapes that I was showing some earlier. Right. Isn't this fun? And, and these all work with the shapes from the English paper piece. That's right. Thing. But like you said earlier, you mentioned the quarter inch seam allowance and that not everybody, there are great patterns in here too, yeah. by the way, is a hand sewer. Right. And so there are instructions in here on machine sewing yes. too. Yes. Which is really fun. Yeah. And hand sewing them. So right. all different ways of putting these together. There's even a sheet where That's you can coloring page. page. Yeah for you. Yeah. This is just a great book. If you don't have one, it's really going to be, and you're just getting started, you want this book. It's like a Bible of getting started. Right. So while you're adding glue sticks, make sure you add that book. It's by Katja Merrick. And, but Bell taught us something amazing. Yes. Okay. And she taught us using this stabilizer. Yep, just interfacing instead of the cardstock mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because then you can leave it in. So here, Miss Erica, will you cut some of these I for us? I would be happy to. Thank you. And I thought that was brilliant because oh my gosh. you could do, I mean, you can glue stick around them and then sew, hand stitch them together. Right. But you could also just do a tiny little zigzag stitch. Oh yeah, You've, it really opens up your opportunities of doing different right. things. Right. Okay. And I feel like if you're just starting, this is such a great die to start with. Yeah, okay. so look at that. And then they can just stay in and you saved yourself yeah. a whole step. Yep. Belle's a genius. Belle is a genius and I learned so much. So rather than using cardstock, which I had to go to the store to buy, mm -hmm. like to the office supply store, um, you can just use stabilizer. But remember, it's not fusible. Right, right. It's this stabilizer. is not fusible. Right. Now, you can experiment with, a st with different stabilizers. Try washing and drying a section. Yep. Yep, so a little bunch together and see if it's gonna break down and be soft enough for you after it's washed and dried. That is a really good idea. So here's another thing to think about, fabric. So Barbara showed us what she did with stripes. Mm -hmm. Think about checks, think about plaids. Belle did some fussy cutting. I did some fussy this cutting. This is super cute, wait till you see this. So I made a little heart with my little Eiffel Towers before my trip to Paris with some fabric, I already had it on hand. I thought it would be cute in some pictures, which I took. And no, I didn't post any I know. until now. I, I was a little today. freaked out. She sent it to me and she's like, look. And I was like, wait, that die has not released yet. I know. But fussy cutting, right? It really yeah. opens up some um, options. So tell yeah. us how you did it. Oh, of course, I didn't get this great idea until the last minute. So I had took some of my templates and because I was using the stabilizer, I could kind of see through it. Mm -hmm. And I just lined it up and then glue basted it. Excellent. Okay. Probably have to cut a few more. I think we should. All right, it's time to check out the ideas of our other expert um, and what she's come up with. Anita, what do you have for us? Hello, ladies. I'm so happy to be here as we launch the English paper piecing jewel petal die. I am not a big English paper piecer, but I have dabbled in it. And the way that I like to start is just with my Plano graph paper. And what I'll do is I'll get it out and just like here, I will create a design on it. 
As you see, here's our pedal piece, and I've added the equilateral triangle from our EPPQ. And if you add three rows together, you end up with this wonderful heart shape. And then I got to thinking, well, what if we add some of those other English paper piecing pieces from the cube? So here I have the hex hexagon, we have our equilateral triangles, and then I did add the jewel shape in there in varying colors, and I use our half hexy as well. Now, I finished this block off with half rectangles, but you could definitely bump up another hexagon to it, and it would look wonderful. Now, when I get started, I usually print up all of my backing shapes and construction paper to get started with, and I am a baster, not a gluer, because I tend to um, get a little carried away with the glue. So now I'd like to show you a couple of projects that got me started on this. One of, one of the first things I did was based off of a June Taylor place map. Now, their place map calls for six flying geese, but I wanted to use my cube. So that's why I said it's based off of the June Taylor place map, and it worked out really well. So I used my cube for the flying geese, but look over here, we have this jewel shape in two different fabrics. So me being who I am, I just wasn't happy with the one tone of fabric. So let me show you how you can do that. It's so easy. You take your die, and if you notice, I've marked mine here with the silver Sharpie from the very point up until the middle of the top of it. And then you're gonna take your two strips that you've sewn together, and that, Sharpie line is going to be your seam marker. So you want to make sure, I press my seams open, you want to make sure that your seam lines up to that Sharpie mark down there, and then again up at the top. And when you do that, you run it through your cutter and you will end up with this awesome um, dual tone jewel shape. Now I will tell you if you're going to use this, you need to make sure that all your fabric is pointing up. And then the other item that I like is, well, let me tell you first that I did do my due diligence and I did plan out my project first. So I have a couple of jewel pieces here. I use my equilateral triangle and my hexi from my English paper piecing. Just see how they were going to go together. So the other thing I did when working with just the jewel piece, I sewed those together on the long side. And look what you end up with. You end up with this really creative heart design. How cool is that? So my other project I did was also inspired by Jewel Taylor, and this is their large cosmetic bag. Now, as you can see, I added those heart shapes. I just would stitch them on here, and look how much that adds to this bag. It's just amazing. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of ideas for this English paper piecing jewel petal. So y'all check back with me in a few minutes and see what my final project is. Bags for days. Bags for days, but how clever of her. I love when she said, me being me. Yes. Maybe to do me. the two tone. Yes. And yes. to think to to how to do that because how simple is that? Right. It was super simple. And we have tons of June Taylor bags available on our website now. Just yes. go to the website. There's a June Taylor button. Just click on yes. it and look at all the different totes well, and stuff. And you could add it to totes. You could add it to placemats like yeah. she did. You could add it to so many different things. There's we, table runners. We did a little. Um, mug mat last yeah. week and you can totally make a beautiful little jeweled oh, hexagon absolutely for that. absolutely oh, all right so many things but let's give away another die to another lucky registered viewer all right quilters our second lucky winner of a go english paper piecing jewel pedal one inch finish die it drum roll please linda s from dubois pennsylvania congratulations congratulations now, Anita said she's not really an English paper piece yeah. person, but she 
had fun with this die. I could tell she was really having fun with her project. Well, and it's funny because when she and I talked before um, she was working on her mm -hmm. projects, she, she said that to me. She's like, I don't really do English paper piecing. But I love the concept of doing the basting right. and then using a machine to sew the pieces right. together and a tiny little zigzag stitch. Because in my quilting head, that is so much faster. And then you you can just keep doing it. You don't have to worry right. about, you know, why seams or whatever. Right. So if you're new to English paper piecing, I would give you two pro tips. Okay. Use stabilizer. Yes. Not cardstock. Yes. And... Um, glue stick your pieces down and then do that stitching yeah on top yeah. I just think it's fabulous and remember English paper piecing is as we said it's basting around a template and mm -hmm. then sewing those pieces together which is totally different than foundation paper piecing which is upside down and backwards sewing upside down and backwards on a with the design printed uh -huh, on the paper. On paper so it's a different it's a totally different technique right. english paper piecing been around for centuries that's right now and like any technique that you try it's bound to get easier when you've got all the right yes. tools so we want to talk about some of the tools that we've got we've got these available yep. on our website and the first one, we usually have one in the studio. I don't know where it is, but this is mine. This is my I have one too. little AccuQuilt zipper bags. This combines my English paper piecing and my binding. Right. I keep all of my things in there together Eric along with a binder. several other random things that okay. just find their way yep. in there. And we filled it with all sorts of supplies, like yes. the small Karen K. Buckley scissors. Yes. Um, we have tiny, we have three sizes We've got of these. all kinds of things over there, okay. Pam. Bring them over Okay, here. so here's our cute little scissors that go in them, okay? Needles. Right. These are the ones that I carry, the little ones with me. Yes. These are by my cutting station. These are by my sewing machine. Yes. And do you have needles? And I have an extra pair of these by my um, embroidery machine. Yes. Okay. Do you that have little, the needles over yes, there? Yes, it's that little oh, tube. Right here. Okay, look. So we have needles in a tiny little tube and a needle threader because my eyes are not as good as they used to be. Nor are mine. And this one's nice because it's got a little LED light in it. Yes. I love that the, ne the needles come in this little tube. These are milliner's needles. And if you haven't worked with them before, they're very fine. They're also, f they have a hollow core in them. They're flexible. How? I don't know, because they're so thin. But they're, they've they got some bend to them, and they're really good for this. I'm sending SOS. SOS. <laughs> okay, so that, these are to begin with. All okay. right. Now, here is another little tip for you. This was ch life changing. You can take thread, you can take any color thread on a on a roll, on, on a, a bob, spool. on a spool. There right. we go. So we have some little small the spools. The AccuQuilt ones, the small spools, but you may want to use a finer weight thread like we talked about earlier. Right. And the 80 weight poly blend on right these pre-wound bobbins that we have on the website, these are from Wonderful, are perfect. And you get so much thread on there and it takes up so little space in your bag. Okay, and this was game changing because never my quilting had ever, ever thought of just using binding. And, bobbins. and not only that, but because it's 80 weight, it's easier to, to get your needle threaded because it's a finer weight. Okay. All right. All and the things. Let's talk about our favorite bindy clips. Yes. Um, Katie always tells us that they're not bindy clips. I they're know. called wonder clips. And I need but some. But I love them forever. And I use them on all different kinds of projects. I use them when I bind. That's the name, bindy clips. Bindy clips. But this is how you would use them to keep your pieces together. Yeah, see, I'm putting my... my my stabilizer pieces here. Yep. You can tell I've been working on things at home. Yep. So, yep. Put and then those you can just together. Put these together. And I like them because they come in different colors, and you can color code your projects, or you can just use bindy clips. Or just okay. Call them now bindy. we also have some magnets that we talked about with Belle. Yes. Oh, here we go. Okay. So here's the one that matches Belle's shirt. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Belle, for having the matching shirt. But we have really cute ones, too. We, we have a variety of these. Okay, so these would hold, if you were to put your pieces together. Here, right here. Oh, right here. Erica has them. They're going to hold it together. Oh, I threaded that needle over. Yes, I know. I don't want to lose it. And um, this is going to allow you to relax your grip while sewing. Because I often find myself pinching these. Right. And then my other hand is a little. Well, or distorting them. 
Right. Especially with the stabilizer. What was the word them. she used? I don't know. She's going to have to. We got to watch us. the show again so we know the word that Look, she told these us. These are purple. Yes, and these are blue. And these are longer, which I think are perfect for the jewel petals. They really are. They really not are. Circles. The circles are good for hexagons, but these are good for the jewel petals. Here's a mix of shapes just to kind of try them out. And these are called so tight. I love this color too. Yep. Yep. Those All are right. my colors. And then, days. of course, we don't want to forget this. What is this, Erica? Oh, that's the June Taylor fabric glue stick. And yeah. you just totally want to have that. And then we had a couple other things. Hold on. I don't know. I, I left it out there. That little roller thing. Oh, right here. We have these on our website. And these work really well when you've got something that's already basted to help really stitch it out. Because if you're doing something on the go and you don't have your iron with you, because normally after I baste them, I'm gonna give them all a really good press. But right. if you're on, you know, if you're sitting at the soccer field, you may not have an iron and a yeah, generator handy. Have an iron. So look how well that works. You could also use, wait, I got one more. Okay. It was sitting over here. The June Taylor Magic Seam Wand. Yes. Too. That can hold those glued pieces down specifically. Yeah. Okay. So once it's, you know, to help flatten that and then be ready to sew those together. So quilters, when you're thinking about English paper pieces, you want to have the right tools. So check out all of these things that are available on our website. While you're getting that new die, throw some of those supplies in and we can get started. Okay, now, we know that you just want to see how these things go together up close and personal. So the lovely Erica has threaded a needle for me, which is very kind of her. Yes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew. Are You're we gonna start, start you can start wherever you want to. Okay. If you just had it, okay. where would you start? I would start right here. Okay. Okay. So um, it has a needle or a, th a knot in the end, and you're just gonna do this little whip stitch around it. Mm -hmm. And you just wanna take tiny little stitches. And I think that that's the thing about English paper piecing is truly quilters, you just want tiny little stitches. Right. And it, Erica and I could just sit here all day and whip stitch pieces together for Right, because you. you just wanna catch a couple of threads. And I don't know whether this is even Greg, a possibility to see this. Oh yeah, great. I'm is about done with mine. Yeah. And you're just literally catching a couple of threads. Right. So I'm gonna take my little magnet off here so you can see kind of how it's looking. And see, it's gonna lay flat. Yeah. And that's what you want. And you just want a little bit of stitching so that you don't see that stitching right. in the pieces. And then when I get to the end, so I'm up here, I started the, the other end, but I'm just gonna oh. do a little loopy, loopy knot here. Okay. I'm just gonna do a little loopy knot, and then I would be ready to move on to sewing my next piece on. So if I was sewing hexagons onto here, yeah, then I would be ready to go ahead and, okay, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna line this up, take my clip, and then to move on to my next piece, hit me, hit me on the side there, thank you. I would go ahead and do the same thing. I would go in, catch a couple of threads, and do a stitch, and then I would do that little knotty thing again. Okay, and quilters, it is truly, truly a zen moment. It is, it I just really is. Lot, like once I get started, I do a whole bunch of them. Yeah. And I take them on airplanes with me, and, cause you know, it's just a small little space and you right. can do all of these. Oh, this is, okay. Here is the best tip you are ever gonna hear about going on an airplane, and I can't even take credit for it. Somebody else told me. Okay. If you're doing this and you're taking it because they take, a, they, they look askance at you taking scissors on, right? Well, but yeah. There are can, certain rules. Yeah, they can but, be, these are good. Okay, but you but know no. what? Yes. Take dental floss. Because? There's a little thing to cut your dental floss on. <gasps> oh. To cut your thread. Nobody's ever gonna confiscate your dental floss. This is true. So there you go. There's your travel tip for your <laughs> English paper piecing. Now, no matter what basting or sewing method you're using, if you're, you, you want to leave your little templates in place until all of your sides are sewn together. Yes. You want to give it that good press like we talked about. You want to use your, 
your pressing methods over there on the go if you have to, right. then you're ready to move on. Yeah, no steam. This dual petal shape is such a fun addition to our English paper piecing dyed library. You're going to love working with it. You really are. All right, let's reveal today's final projects. I wonder what Barbara's come up with. What do you have so far? Well, I'm back. I tried it and I do like it. Um, it's gonna be a great um, project to take on the go with me. Thank you, Pam and Erica, for the videos. So, with the tools that I needed, I needed a little carrier. So, I came up with this design. I used the large hexagon and um, appliqued my jewel shapes. On the outside is some vinyl, so I can glue on this surface. On the back, I used some Insulbrite, so I can iron on this surface. And inside, I made some little pockets. Um, I've got a little zipper pocket here. I can put my jewels and papers inside there. Um, here's a little needle holder, so I can keep my needles. And then over here, I've got another little tab place. I can put things like my glue, my little magic stick, uh, scissors, things can go in here. And then it snaps together, pop it in my purse, and I've got my on-the-go on the go jewel carrier. Here's a few other designs. You can kind of just pick um, whatever you want to make on there. These are not quite finished yet. And um, I hope you enjoy the on the go jewel carrier. Okay, that was brilliant. It really Use was. The big hexagon, create yes. this fun little bag that has all of your parts and pieces. And I bet you could put your dental floss in there too. <laughs> totally put it in there. All right, Anita, what have you made for us today? Welcome back, ladies. I am so excited to show you all my project based on the English paper piecing jewel petal die. And with the holidays right around the corner, I will tell you that was part of my inspiration for my Christmas tree door hanger. As you can see, we have the jewel shape here forming our tree. The base of the tree is our half hexes from our EPP cube. We have the equilateral triangles as the twinkle lights on our tree. Now everything below the tree is made with our strip dies and our cubes. And then no tree is complete without a twinkle star on top. And that is made with our star die and craft foam. So I hope y'all enjoy my Christmas tree door hanging. Okay, that was super clever Darling. for her. Darling for the so holidays. So cute. Again, she starts with graph paper, even though, yeah. you know, they're not standard size pieces. And boy, that was really clever. Well, and I love that she creates her own patterns. I do too. All right, now we have even more tr inspiration for everyone today with the trunk show. So Lynn, will you come help us out? Oh, yes. Absolutely. All right. All right, so first, right, we have some classic yes. projects, right? So this is kind of a modern take on the grandmother's flower garden, which is just what I always think of whenever anybody says English paper piecing. So this is the hexagon garden. It's, it's by Amanda Harward of Larkspur Quilts, and it uses just the hexagon shape. Right, and uh, you know, you can see the little petals here, which by the way are made of grunge, <laughs> and then solids, but what a really great way to do scrappy. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And you could incorporate, now this is all done with the cube, right? Right. I believe so, right. but we, you could incorporate that new jewel petal shape as I think leaves you could. or, yeah, yeah, have some fun with it. Yeah, I like it a lot. And I love the quilting, the little yep. wavy quilting. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. I've been working on that particular project for quite some quite time. Some time. Okay, Eric, I'm gonna give you one of these. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, these, so. All right, so first up is the English paper piece Rose Pillow by Christina Brinkerhoff of Center Street Quilts. She used Riley Blake fabric, and it's, Erica's holding it. So Erica, do you wanna go over, or go over the shapes? Lynn is holding the rose. Oh, rose, there I have go. the rose. So here's the diamond. So this is made with the cube. Here's the diamond, here's the equilateral triangle. We've got our half hexagons, and we've got our hexagons. Look at how it fun. uses all the shapes. It's so pretty. And you know what? It's just that shape that we're making. And then you're just putting it on like an applique. And it almost makes it three-dimensional. It makes a really cute project. 
And then Lynn is holding the English paper piecing heart pillow, again by Christina Brinkerhoff of Center Street Quilts. And again, that same Riley Blake fabric. Right, so this has little hexagons from the EPP cube and then the little diamonds to fill out that heart shape. And, and I think half hexagons. Oh, and half too. hexagons yeah. too, yes. So uh, this is just a great way to take the, you know, this is a, could be a small project. Right. And make these cute little pillows with it. Yeah. yeah. I like it and a lot. Move on I'm going to put one. one. I'm going to put one. We'll put them up here. here. Okay. I think these are next. Oh, yes. Nope. We have these the, the jewel table runner. Oh, ta oh. oh, table runner. Okay. So we're, we're looking at this up here. There we go. And this, this is maybe my favorite project with this new die. It's the Jewel Table Table Runner by Andy Knowlton of A Bright Corner. It's Riley Blake fabric. Of course, I love the blues. Of course, the blue and white stripe yep. is fabulous. Finding gets extra points. And then he used, or Andy, should, sorry, she used the um, Equilateral Triangle. That's the shape That's I was trying to think <laughs> of from the cube to create the corners. So they kind of look like little hearts. Mm-hmm. So we have been getting some questions and some great comments um, during today's show. So thank you, everyone. But this definitely could be a pattern if you were interested. We had some questions about could I use my sewing machine versus hand piecing. Yes. And actually, these, I know we, you, I think you both answered that already. Yes. But just to reiterate it, uh, yes, these shapes are designed with a quarter inch seam so that it is for either. And the right. English paper piecing book that you talked about by mm -hmm. Katja Merrick is it also has all the instructions for both hand piecing as well as uh, machine. machine piecing. So this would be a great one to do that project. Well, with it really would be. So let's just talk here for a second. Mm -hmm. Here's the jewel pedal. You would just sew on a quarter inch seam, yes. that yep. equilateral triangle. I would press your seams open. Here's another jewel pedal. Here's the other equilateral triangle. So that to this side, so the two together, and now you have a row. Right. Yeah. And, and now you have piecing. a row, and it's all straight piecing. There is no Y seams, none single Y seam right there. Yeah, so that's there why is. this is going to be my favorite project too, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> well, just think how fast you can sew that together. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the thing. Okay. And also, great use of scraps. Speaking of scraps, yes. I think that these jewel petal yeah. posters by Jen Strauser at the Dizzy Quilter are genius because, I mean, you're going to use every last bit of your fabric when yep. you're making these. Yep. They're lovely. And it has that um, hexagon in the center and, again, those equilateral triangles. Make them in every colorway, yep. in every, you can make them to match every quilt yep. with and all actually your scraps. put together quilted and then turned inside yes. out and top yeah. stitched. Yeah, we have our little tags on the back. You don't have to bind, but... Pam. No binding. no binding. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to make a hundred of them. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> yeah, stocking no stuffers. No binding. There we go. Oh, stocking stuffers. Stuff. That's a that's I think if you have like really a good guild idea. and you oh, do a yeah. gift exchange in the oh, winter, yes. they would be perfect for them. Thank you, Jen, for not having binding. Okay. <laughs> I yeah, this one though give me does have binding. Upside down. It's the Go Jewel Blossom Wall Hanging by Jen Strauser of Dizzy Quilter. And this is so pretty. Mm. Of course, it's got some yummy purples, but she's made these jewel petal flowers, basically. Right. And we've got some over here. It and it basically is the six petals around hexagon, and then that is sewn on to the background. It's just applique. It's mm -hmm. just brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, if you're new to quilting or new to English paper piecing, sorry, there is a string there. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. Um, then this is a great way to start because you only need to make what sixteen. Yeah. Yes. And this is it comes on the packaging as well. So mm -hmm. it's your yeah. starter. Project. Oh, there's a lovely video that Eric and I did yes. make. Oh, yes, we did. Yes, yeah, we did. You know, and we have a lot of great videos on our website. That's really good to mention yep. on English paper piecing. If you're just getting started, this is a really great way to get going with it. And there are videos taking you step by step by step through the process that Pam and I've made. Yes, and I do want to show the back of this one because the fabric, fabric is fabric fabulous. Is good job, Jen. Yes. Right. Good job. Now, all of these patterns are available as free downloads on the AccuQuilt website, so be sure to download your patterns before your die arrives, envision your fabrics, and you're yeah. gonna be all ready to go. All right, Lynn, you already told us you're taking the table runner, right? Oh, you know, I'll leave it up here for the yeah. end of the show because so everyone can enjoy it, and then I'll take it with me. <laughs> enjoy the rest of the show. I love that about it. 
All right, quilters, let's check the fabric mailbox Ooh. to see what yes. fabric we have today. Did leave us the coasters. We could probably keep the coasters. Our friends from Figo provided us as a giveaway, and we want to give a little shout out to Anita. It's her happy birthday. It is her happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy Anita. Birthday, Anita. We're not sending you fabric. No, we're, we're just not, sending you wishes. We are saying happy birthday. We cannot give this away. We have to. Is it true? It is. Wait till you see it. Lynn's here today. She'll know. <gasps> Ooh, look at look this. Look at this. This is like it's Sashiko. Yes. <gasps> this is this Figo. Is, oh, Figo. This is some pretty fun oh fabric. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and then little tiny. Tiny, tiny oh, pin dots. Oh. They say we have to give it away. Yes. It's I like don't think linen. it's true. It's, oh. It's beautiful. Wow. All right, Erica, give yours away. All right, the winner of the first selection of fabric, they're, 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 they are identical, I think, is, drum roll please, <laughs> Teresa Z from Warmister, Pennsylvania. Congratulations. Congratulations. And we're heading to Pennsylvania. And the winner of the second selection of fabric is, drum roll please, <laughs> Diana D from Woods Cross, Utah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh. And a huge shout out for, to Figo for sponsoring today's show and this fabulous fabric for making English paper piecing projects. Oh, it's wow. beautiful. All right, quilters, today is the first Tuesday of the month. We want to remind you to participate in Covering the World One Quilt at a Time campaign. That's right. For the rest of this year, 2023, we're partnered with Island Batiks, who's one of our sponsors, and Baby Lock as another sponsor. Each week, someone from Island Batik or the AccuQuilt team will be making a quilt and donating it to the charity of their choice. And speaking of Island Batik, they have a sew along this month. They're using the North Carolina Star Dye. Oh, they Check are. It out. Check it out. Yes. All right. All right. Once you've made your quilt, donate it to whatever charity you'd like mm -hmm. and post a public photo of it with the name of the charity and the hashtag Quilt the World 2023 on social media or in Covering the World One Quilt at a Time Facebook group by December 31st. That's where we pick winners. That's right. You can make as many quilts to donate as you want. And following these steps means that you're entered into monthly prize drawings as well as the grand prize drawing that will occur on January 1st, 2024. We have seen so many wonderful donations, but it's now, and now it's time to announce the winner for September. The September Quilt the World campaign winner who will receive Island Batik Fat Quarters and AccuQuilt reward points valued together at a total of $250 is, drum roll please, <laughs> Marilyn McKinney Belt. Congratulations, Congratulations Marilyn. All right, do we get to see Marilyn's quilt? Look at how Ooh. pretty that is. Oh, it has a teddy bear on it the top. A teddy bear. Everything's better with a teddy bear. It is. So oh, Marilyn, pretty. good job. And who did Marilyn donate it to? We don't know. We'll check it out on the Quilt the World. There you go. All right, quilters, the time has come. We ask what level of expertise you oh, have with yes. English paper piecing, and it's time to hear what the majority of you had to say. All right, the teams counted all your votes, and the winner is... Oh! Okay, so we are split with the majority of you saying beginner, yes. then novice, and a small percentage that say you're the expert, so we know who to call on. Yeah, so beginners, this is a great beginner die. It is, Get you it some is. stabilizer, get you some June Taylor glue stick, make you some projects. Speaking of getting started quilters, we've got tons of great deals available for you on our website, and one of them is the Go Me Starter Set on sale for under $100. We mentioned it earlier, it's gonna work with this die to try. So if you've never done anything like this before, here is the perfect time to get started. Get your English paper piecing jewel petal die, get your Go Me, and jump in and try it. And a six it. by 12 cutting mat. Oh yes, and okay. a six by 12 cutting mat. Plus you can use the code FREEKIT, F-R-E-E-K-I-T, to get a free quilt as you go wine tote kit when you buy a fabric cutter while supplies last. This offer does not include the Markdown Go Me starter set, so check our website for more details. Okay, good idea. All right, and to get your order in, open a new tab in your browser, type in accuquilt.com slash party, go to the site, see the offers, place your order. Now you can also pick up this die to try series die at your local retailer you while they have them in stock. And speaking of retailers, if you're heading to or at the So Creative Expo in Naples, Florida, be sure to stop by and say hi to our retailer there, Flash Sewing. 
And Eric and I are leaving on Wednesday. We are heading east. We're going to Philadelphia. We're going to Hayes Sewing and Steve Sewing. And Springwater Design and Material Girls. Yep, check out their websites to sign up for the classes there. All right, quilters, it's time for Eric and I to get ready for our next show. We hope today's trunk show was just what you needed to inspire you to continue your artistic journey with a new die. See you next time. Thanks for watching our show. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and look for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can visit the events page on AccuQuilt's website for more details on upcoming shows. And while you're there, check out the blog for tips, tricks, tutorials, and inspiration galore. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Quilters, be sure to join me every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live. We have tons of fun. Tomorrow, the lovely Eric and I will be starting the final AQS and AccuQuilt Along series of 2023. You'll want to tune in to see if we won a door prize that we give away during the show. Don't forget, we're using the glorified nine patch die. And join us every Tuesday at 12 noon Central Time for more launch parties and trunk shows. These events are filled with tips, tricks, and inspiration. Next time, we'll be launching two new dies. We're so excited for you to join us.